real chicharrones Monterey style. Chicharron de la Ramos. Welcome back to Teach a Man to Fish channel. In today's video, we're going to Monterey, Mexico. This is a real world battle in Monterey, Mexico. People claim to have the best chicharrones around. I happen to agree with those who are on the Ramos side of the debate. The hardest part of this recipe is actually tracking down a whole pork belly. Sometimes you've got to go to a specialty butcher or a specialty meat store where you can get access to good quality whole pork belly. This a little bigger than I'm only able to easily find whole frozen pork bellies, but with a little quick thaw, I was able to split this into two pieces and I'll save us the other half for another cook. As I travel abroad, I do like to go into the various meat markets and see what's being sold. I can tell you sometimes you see cuts and quality that you're just not used to seeing in your home neighborhood. I was really digging these tomahawks down at the Ramos store in Monterey. We got that belly home and it's not quite thawed all the way because I did want to put half of it back into the freezer. The critical part of this is having that sharp knife because this belly came with the skin on the exterior and it needed to be cut away. If you're thinking of pork rinds or chicharrones, most likely what you're thinking of is these, baconettes. Uh, these are real popular in, our, in the area of the country where I am. You can see right there it says chicharrones. But these are completely different than the true chicharrones that you get down in Mexico because they're 95% they're air, just kind of light and fluffy and really dissolve down to nothing. Not really substance, meat, or any creaminess to it like you get from these actual or real chicharrones coming out of Monterey. Like we've talked about in other videos, the grain of the meat matters. You can see that grain runs perpendicular, and as you chew or break that meat up, the sinew isn't in long strands. It just makes the cut better. As you may already know, pork belly is where bacon comes from, so that molding fat and meat ratio that you see there looks exactly like a piece of bacon because that's the cut that it comes from. We're going to go through this whole half of the belly, cutting it into these quarter to a half inch strips. And then when the belly starts to get too long, we'll cut those into strips in and of themselves as well. So there you can see we're cutting it into those sub strips so that you have more like bite size or manageable pieces. Once all those pieces have been cut, we want to go ahead and sprinkle it with a light dusting of salt and just kind of think of the saltiness flavor that you would like on a piece of steak. You spread that around, mix it up a little bit, and then you'll be letting that sit overnight for that salt to absorb. You can also do some seasoned salt if that's what you want or the flavor that you like. We're going to go ahead and do both styles here and allow that to rest in the refrigerator as well. After having rested overnight, it's the next day. We go ahead and pull those out of the refrigerator. All of that salt that you put in yesterday is absorbed into the meat. You can see there's no crystals left. We're going to layer that tightly in our cast iron Dutch oven and then cover it in lard. The lard that we're using here is actually was hunted from a hog in Georgia. And we went ahead and made the, our own lard but you can pick up lard in the store. It just so happens you're going to be getting some of the preservatives that come in the manufactured lard. Some say that changes the flavor. Now that we have that meat layered in, covered up with lard, it goes into the oven to bake at 300 degrees for four hours. While we're waiting for that to come out of the oven, let's take a quick second to talk about Monterey. It's a very heavy industrial town, a long history of the industry and foundries that exist there. As a matter of fact, the whole city center is actually an old foundry where they've left a lot of the equipment 
that's there. And if you can believe this, picture this being allowed to exist in the United States. There's no railings up there. In this foundry park, there's equipment that was just looked like it came off the factory floor yesterday and was abandoned in place. Overlooking the city is a mountain called La Silla. Kind of looks like a saddle or a seat right on the mountain. It's an interesting formation, but I can't help but be reminded of this from a movie that we all know of what that looks like. You've got the dedication and the history of industry tied to the city, but the real star is the mountains that ring and are ever present in the background of the city. These are the very base of the Rocky Mountains where they end in North America. I also had to get a hold of some goat carnitas. It's a delicacy in Monterey. There's whole restaurants dedicated it, and man, it's good. You hunters out there will feel real welcome at this restaurant with the decorations that they have hanging from the wall. Pretty impressive stuff. I believe Monterey actually translates into King of the Mountains or Mountain of the King, something along those lines. If you know, do me a favor, write it down below in the comments. So call those mountain formations bishop's hats. So that's where we picked up for you this recipe for chicharrones. Let's go ahead and travel back, landing in Richmond, Virginia. While we saw the sights abroad, it's four hours later, and those chicharrones are ready to come out of the Dutch oven. They're actually very tender at this point. They've kind of stewed in their own juices and that low temperature in the lard. They're very delicate and ready to slide over to be fried. Almost like warm butter texture. We want to gently tease those apart. They're pretty delicate at this point and transfer that oil over to another pot. You don't have to use the second pot. I just find you have to clean out the little bits otherwise they'll get burned that are attached to the bottom. Now you want to get that oil to about 350 to 380 degrees in this cast iron induction cooktop is a great combination for getting a steady, consistent control over that oil because you kind of want to do a slow fry to that golden color. And once they start to float up, my mouth is watering just talking about this, looking at the video as I edit it. Between the salt, the fat flavor, that meat, and the texture and crispiness of it, it's just a perfect balance, mouthfeel, a phenomenal way to eat this pork belly. In looking at this, you might have a temptation to say, well, it's just fried bacon. It tastes completely different and does have a different texture than your traditional fried bacon flavor. Just look at the fat that's in there, that the texture of it is amazing. So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload, and over here is a playlist you might just enjoy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.